Hey, Jackie, thank you for making this meeting happen. Such a pleasure. I was determined for this beautiful meeting with you from the start. For millions of those who know Jackie Lappin and for those who don't, Jackie is the author of The Art of Conscious Creation and is the world's foremost expert on practical conscious creation. Jackie has this phenomenal platform called Speakertunity that provides direct contact for speakers looking out to be booked with on across multiple platforms and with tools like speaker one sheets, podcast sheets, training, how to get books, everything out there. So Jackie, a big hi from India. Rajni, I am so delighted to be here. Thank you for introducing me to your Indian community. This is fantastic. And we just love to embrace all of you there. Thank you. Well, Jackie, how did all this start from where you were to where you are today? So it actually starts when I was 11 years old, when I decided I wanted to be a sports writer. And I then ended up working at the Detroit Free Press, the Associated Press, the, on the front pages of the Los Angeles Times and the Washington Post. From there, I went on to have one of the largest sports special events in cable TV PR agencies in America. And I'm thrilled to say it really succeeded for 20 years. But at the end of that period, things were really changing. And I, the media wasn't quite what it was before. And I wrote two books in personal growth, uh, The Art of Conscious Creation and Practical Conscious Creation, Daily Techniques to Manifest Your Desires. These books <clears throat> really helped me understand that my heart lay with the other leaders of the world that were trying to make it a better place. And so I rebranded my company to Conscious Media Relations. And over the last 12 years, we've been doing radio podcasts. First, when we introduced authors to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts with a minimum guarantee of 30 interviews. Now, back about five years ago, some of those people came to me and said, well, can you book me for speaking engagement? And we said, no, we don't really want to do that, but we know where they are. And that's how Speakertunity was born. Speakertunity is a speaker and leader resource company. And it, it became obvious that if we could just give people all the resources where they can book themselves, that we were going to be of greater service. <clears throat> so on Speakertunity, we give them all the different kinds of directories for things like radio shows and podcasts and live and virtual speaking opportunities and virtual summits and TEDx and um, virtual networking so that they can actually get uh, the opportunity to find them without having doing any of the research themselves. And we also provide training so that it gets them booked so that they don't have to try to wander in the wilderness trying to figure out well, what to say, how to say it, what tools to send, how to convince people. And then the last thing is we created the actual tools like speak the one sheets and podcast introductory sheets so that people don't can get those easily and increase their booking success. So that's how Speakertunity was born and I'm excited to be expanding it. Now, one of the things that we talked about too, Rajni, is that most of our resources are really based in the US and Canada for our virtual and live speaking, but our podcasts and our summits and our um, uh, and virtual networking are all accessible from anywhere. And, and while yes, um, if you wanna speak in the US, our speaking and virtual and live platforms are great, but we just don't have anything in India right now. So um, we hope to one of these days, but we're, we'll get there, we hope. Wow, that's a lot of information. And something really interesting is from interest in posts to spirituality and then the book. What made this transition? Well, I think I was always been a spiritual being. I remember when I first started my first company, I realized that there was this divine presence that was kind of looking over my shoulder and guiding me and, and supporting me as things were going along. But one of the things that became evident was 
that the universe was leaving me breadcrumbs <clears throat> and directing me in various different directions. If I was listening, that was leading me in greater success. So for example, all those people that said, <clears throat> can you book me for speaking? Events? Well, the universe was tapping me on the head and said, yes, you need to look at this. There's something there. So we created that. <clears throat> and then for example, um, with virtual networking, we saw all this virtual networking happening everywhere. And it became obvious that nobody was gathering all that into one place. So we developed a product that gives you 200 um, virtual networking opportunities, 50 of which are just for women that all are recurring low cost and no cost. Ah, so <clears throat> each time that I get tapped on that head, I say, is this something we should be doing now? And then how do I create it? And so, so I just say that I follow the universe's breadcrumbs. Wow. So with so many platforms out there on the internet today for TED Talks, radio shows, podcasts, virtual summits, mm -hmm. could you explain what the right path or the journey for a budding speaker should be? Well, <clears throat> the first thing you have to have is you really, really need to know that who your target audience is and where they are gathering. So before you can even get out there, you have to identify what the meetings or the venues or the associations or the events that they, they attend. The second thing is you need to put together a presentation that has real value to that audience that begins to show them a path out of their problem. And then you have to have an author that is the next step for them. So once you introduce them to the fact that you're a wonderfully capable um, person to lead them out of the wilderness, then you can say, now, was this helpful to you? Here is something else that might even take you to the next level. Would you like to come along on this journey with us? And I want to invite you to, to consider this. I mean, I know a lot of people have that, that concern of being too salesy. It's not a sale. It's an invitation. It's an opportunity to show people that you have something that is going to take them to that next level. So when you have all that together, now the next question is <clears throat> your, your presentation. Where do you start? Now in the U.S., there's a great organization called Toastmasters, which it meets weekly and helps you improve your speaking. It's very inexpensive. It's an easy way to do that. But if you really want to improve your skills, you really want to get a great speaker trainer, something like you that do, Rajni. Um, and really? so um, you want to really have somebody that's going to get, your, uh, get you up to speed. And then you want to start locally. You want to start at small local uh, events that are going to improve, you know, allow you to improve your skill and skills in front of smaller crowds. See what's worked, see what's not working, see what you need to tweak and get your confidence up. And once your confidence is up and once you've got this down and it's working really well, then you start on the bigger stages. Yeah, I get that. Uh, what uh, did you know or how did you know that these were the right and necessary steps that you took to get to the place to promote yourself? Well, I think one of the things is that you really stand on the shoulder of giants, you know, and <clears throat> you look to see what other people have done to get a sense of you know, what, what path did they take? What, how can they shorten my learning curve? You know, how do I um, emulate what they're doing? I mean, we're all great at, uh, there's nothing wrong with stealing from other people when they're willingly giving it. And uh, the other thing is, you know, you watch what's going on in the, in the, in the environment. Um, you know, I, I watch to see that Clubhouse has become a big thing. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I'm, I'm looking at that at some point for integrate, integrate into our marketing. Um, but, um, you know, if, if you keep watching what the trends are and what other people in your industry are doing, you're going to see opportunities to rise. And I'm a big believer in talking to people you know who are already doing things and saying, hey, can you give me an idea here? Can you show this to me? And you had a lot of success with this. Give me some ideas why that worked. And most people are really willing to, to uh, impart their information. So those are, those are the ways to get up to speed. So true. Create an opportunity. Don't lose an opportunity. Exactly. Well, then moving on to authoring a book, how do you help people publish and promote their book? How could your platform help them? 
Well, you first need to get published, and there are three paths to publishing. The first one is to do it yourself on KDP, which is Amazon's platform. Just upload your book there, but you really should have a good editor go through it first. Um, the second is to get a hybrid publisher, and I really think that this is a really good way to go. You're going to pay them, but they're going to know the ins and outs and make sure that you end up with a great book. The third way is um, to go traditional publishing route. Now, if you go the traditional publishing route, there are a lot of liabilities, one of which is going to take you an hour, a year and a half before you see the book. The second is you might make a, might make a dollar a book. Uh, when the, by the time you get done with it. And the third problem is that most traditional publishers won't touch anybody until they have hundreds of thousands of people already in their platform. They today, in today's world with the economics, they are not going for newbies unless they know that they can actually sell a book because they've got a huge community. So the first thing is get your book published. Then the next thing is that's when you come to us. You can look to us um, in, to do a radio podcast to, on your behalf and where we do all the work, but that can be really a little bit expensive. We're, we're really good at it. I mean, we've done them for Don Miguel Ruiz and Ariel Ford and James Twyman and Joe Vitale and Chris and Janet Atwood and Maureen St. Germain, and then huge luminaries in our, in our community. And you'll see that there are over 80 amazing reviews on the Conscious Media Relations website. However, if that's out of your range, you can do it yourself with the speaker tunity uh, products. You go to um, the first obvious line one would be our speaker tunity radio insider, which gives you 40 radio shows, podcasts, and video casts that are life enhancing. So if you speak to audiences in that space in the personal growth, spirituality, wellness, women's empowerment, living better, all of that, that would be there. The other uh, option, and that's the green icon. The other option is our Speaker Tunity Radio Insider for Business, where we have 40 podcasts, radio shows, and video casts that are just focused on the business community. Now, um, that, uh, you know, if you really want to speak to a business audience, that is perfect. And that's the navy blue icon. And then, of course, um, a, a great way to get your, your word out is the virtual networking so that you can get uh, keep uh, dropping your book in the places that people are going to see it and potentially and you can include a link. And, you know, while you're talking to people, they can go and buy. And then, um, you know, if you've got a goodly um, opt-in list, because um, virtual, uh, virtual uh, summits really are looking for opt-in lists of 2,500 or more, then virtual um, summits are a great way to market a book. Um, and that's a cooperative event where you have to promote that you're part of it in order to, um, in, to earn your opportunity to be on that summit. So all of those are great opportunities. But <clears throat> the A number way, one way to market a book is in person. So once the pandemic ends, you really want to get out into your audience, into, into your marketplace and start speaking one-on-one -on -one with those audiences. That is the, no question, more people leave a room buying a book when they see an author than any other time. However, in the world of virtual speaking, it also can work that way. And you, again, can put your link in the chat box and people can take advantage of it. It's just a little bit more um, challenging sometimes to create that intimacy um, when you're selling from a, a virtual platform, but it still works. And, uh, you know, we got clients that love it and they tell us that they're selling books. So that's a great thing. Wow, that's a lot of information. One quick question relating to your explanation. As an author, what is the minimum number of pages that you would recommend for a book and a maximum too? Well, you know, that's changing in, in our world today. Um, minimum pages, I really think is optimum about 125. Um, but there are different interpretations of what a book should be. Um, and if it's, um, you know, if, if it's more of a pamphlet than a book, well, it doesn't have to be that long, but it's hard to market anything shorter than that, than 125 pages as a real book. So, but if you're positioning it as a, as a real solid book, 125 pages is about right. That's cool. So a few tips on how to make your book relevant to a booker? So the first one is obviously it's got to be the right demographic because if you don't fit that audience, 
then in fact, the booker is not going to pay any attention to you. The second one is you have to solve a problem that uh, that audience suffers from. So the booker needs to know that you're walking in with a solution to whatever it is that's plaguing his audience. That's really, that's the number one consideration. And then the, the third one that I like to talk about is, is your story their story? Have you experienced something in your life that has brought you to this point that they have experienced as well and they're suffering from? I mean, tragically, when there's so much sexual abuse in the world or whether you've had PTSD or whether you've had a business collapse and you rebuilt it from the ground up, whatever your story is, if that audience is suffering from that same experience, well, then the host, the, um, the uh, booker is going to see you as perfectly relevant to that audience. Now, that's what th only three of about 12 different questions you can ask yourself that is going to really, really make yourself relevant. Because when you're writing that proposal letter to the, the speaker booker, you really want to be absolutely relevant. And you can put what that relevancy is in that proposal letter so that they can see why you match. So um, I want to give you uh, something free that's going to be really valuable. It's got all 12 questions on it. <clears throat> so if you go to relevantstrategysheet.com, and I'm going to repeat that, relevantstrategysheet.com, you should be able to grab that sheet, that um, that. Uh, planning program that basically will help determine exactly why you're relevant to that audience. Well, you are the best interpretation of the giving tree. Thank you. And one quick question. I'm sure with all this information and help, my friends back home here would certainly be able to either make it up for virtual events or soon or later in-person events. How can people find you and connect to you? Well, um, there are a couple of different ways. One, you can go to speakertunity.com and there's a contact form there. Um, two, um, we have a little robot on the very front page and you can ask questions there. And Jeff, my right hand will answer them anytime between nine and five Pacific uh, on weekdays. And uh, the last is if you really want to set up a meeting with me, you can go uh, to uh, www.schedule.jackielappin.com and I'm happy to chat with you. Thank you very much, Jackie. That was such a lot of information and help to many of us down here. Thank you for your time. You're most welcome, Rajni. It is so lovely to be with you and all of the folks in your community. Thanks again.